In the 22nd century, the medical rescue ship Nightingale is out doing its usual patrol in space. Measurements trying to catch some Zs, but the ship's AI sweetie shakes him up, wanting to play chess. Meanwhile, Yerzy and Danica are hooking up in another room. Captain Marley is deep into recording some in-depth analysis of Tom and Jerry, while Evers is checking up on Nick, a former addict. A robot tries pitching in during the checkup, but Nick's quick to point out how outdated it is, and Evers explains Marley's got a soft spot for old stuff. Evers suggests Nick try socializing, so he plays some cards with Benjamin. Later, he reports back to Evers about his progress and, noticing her vibe, he starts wondering why she's got it in for him. Evers lets him know she can't stand addicts, says they destroy everything they touch. Suddenly, Sweetie triggers the alarm they're getting a distress signal. Everyone hustles to their stations to check out the signal, which is degraded after five days of travel. It's a direct call instead of going through dispatch, which is out of the norm. Turns out it's coming from Titan 37, an old ice mining op past the colony outpost. Sweetie drops some intel. It's a rogue moon that got kicked out of orbit, meaning there's a ton of gravitational mess around it. The mining crew dipped out five years ago, so that just makes things even sketchier. When Sweetie scans for an ID, it finds the name Carl Larson Evers X, who used to abuse her. Problem is, this moon's sitting over 3,000 light years away, so they're gonna have to dimension jump to get there. After setting up the course, the crew strips down and rushes into the stabilization chambers. Marley, without saying why, tells Evers to hop in his chamber while he uses another. Once everyone's secured, the ship kicks into gear with plasma acceleration, and in a flash of light, they jump to Titan 37 in just seconds. But then the alarm blares again, and to their horror, Marley's chamber glitches, fusing his skin to the polyglass he looks like a total monster now. He's still alive, and Evers wants to treat him, but at that moment, the ship gets slammed by debris from the moon. Sweetie pipes up, warning that their fuel tank's been breached and they're drifting into a high-gravity field. Despite all the chaos and shaking, Evers, Yerzy, and Danica scramble to save Marley, while Nick and Benjamin bolt to the control room. There, they find the engines busted, fuels leaking fast, and on top of that, they're orbiting a blue giant star, meaning the gravity's about to pull the ship down hard. The nightingale is already spiraling downward, and Sweetie tells them the thrusters can't pull them out. Nick overrides the computer, switching to manual control. While Nick fights to keep the ship afloat, the others struggle to crack open Marley's chamber. Marley, in agony, begs them to end his misery. Danica's against it, but Ever shuts her down and puts Marley out of his suffering. Meanwhile, Nick manages to fire the thrusters and burn through a ton of fuel to stop the ship from crashing. Afterward, Nick gets Sweetie back online, and she tells him they've lost about 82 of their fuel. The ship's still gonna crash in 17 hours, and the jump drive needs pretty much that same amount of time to recharge. When it's ready, they'll have an 11-minute window to bounce. Sweetie starts scanning Titan for Carl, while Nick brings Ever some booze to toast Marley. They end up getting on. Meanwhile, Yerzy drops a surprise in application to get approval for a kid, which is super tough to get. Danica used to want kids, but now she's not so sure. Not long after, Benjamin calls Nick and Evers to show them the vents weren't regulating, which is what killed Marley. Evers realizes Marley must have seen the warning, and that's why he had her switch chamber. Just then, Sweetie picks up a small transport ship leading Titan and tries reaching a pilot, but no answer. The ship's speeding toward the Nightingale, so the crew scrambles to suit up for the hit. The Nightingale shudders as the smaller ship docks, and when the door opens, a pilot collapses and there's a fire. Yerzy jumps in with an extinguisher to put out the flames while Evers checks on the guy. She pulls off his helmet and realizes this ain't Carl. They drag the guy to the infirmary and scan him, finding a weird growth on his bones like they're getting stronger but he's otherwise fine. Later, Evers tells Nick that this isn't the real Carl Larson, but the resemblance is uncanny, she figures it might be his son. Meanwhile, Danica steps out of the infirmary to grab some supplies, and when she comes back, the guy's wandering around buck naked. He introduces himself as Troy and immediately starts hitting on Danica, leaving her totally unsure how to handle it. The team's trying to figure out what to do since they've got six people now, but only five chambers. Nick steps up, saying he'll stay behind and the rest can send a rescue ship once they jump. Evers checks in on Troy, who spills that he's been on Titan by himself and that Carl Larsen was his dad. Carl died three years ago, and Troy isn't too fond of him either thinks he was a lousy guy. He called the Nightingale directly because Carl taught him that if things ever went sideways, Evers was the one to trust. Apparently, Carl also told him he was sorry he couldn't be a better partner for her. After giving Troy a vitamin shot, Nick sits down with him for some questioning. Troy says he came to Titan to scavenge with some buddies, but they bailed when they couldn't find anything and left him behind. He also drops the Titans packed with fuel, so Nick suggests they send the shuttle to grab some. But Nick still got his doubts about Troy and quietly asks Yerzy to search his ship for anything sketchy. Before heading into the small ship, 
Yerzy notices how Troy's been hitting on Danica, which kind of pisses him off. Once inside, Yerzy uses a scanner to check things out and finds something odd in a box. When he opens it, he's shocked to see this glowing purple thing. Yerzy calls Nick, but before Nick gets there, he touches the object and is blown away by how it makes him feel so much so that he sticks his hand in it. He pulls it out just before Nick shows up and swears he didn't touch a thing. Later, they bring the object onto the Nightingale, and Sweetie flags it as a potential biohazard. Evers uses a special machine to control the robot, which places the object in quarantine. Troy admits he kept it hidden because he didn't want to share the loot, but goes on to tell his tale. Three years ago, he picked up a stray transmission from some miners saying they found something strange buried in the ice. He quickly rounded up a few buddies and headed to Titan, only to find all the miners gone. His friends thought he was full of it and ditched him, but Troy stuck around digging through the mines until he found that strange object. He's convinced it's alien and now plans to sell it to the government, offering the crew a five cut each if they help him haul it. A fight breaks out because Troy and Yerzy want to hang on to the object, but the rest of the crew doesn't trust it. Evers points out Troy's weird bone growth, but he swears he's always been like that. In the end, Nick calls the shots telling them to scan the object and log all the data, but they'll toss it once they're in clear space. Still skeptical of Troy's whole deal, Nick quietly asks the crew to prep a backup rescue unit just in case, while he heads to the moon to refuel. The shuttle starts picking up too much speed because of the heavy gravity, but Nick uses his skills to regain control and manages to land smoothly. He takes the elevator down into the mines and it also speeds up thanks to the gravity, but he makes it to the bottom without a problem. Back on the Nightingale, Troy tries to get closer to Evers but messes up by bringing up Carl, which makes her storm off. Then he tracks down Danica and jokes about how she's always thinking dirty. He picks up on the fact that she wants a kid but isn't sure if Yerzy's the right guy for the job, so he flirts with her until she gives in and they hook up. Meanwhile, Yerzy sneaks into the quarantine area to keep touching the object which gives him a crazy amount of pleasure. In the lab, Evers and Sweetie run tests on the object and discover it's made of some extra-dimensional material that human science can't even explain. It's got a threed shell protecting ninth-dimensional matter, meaning it's a bomb that could wipe out the whole universe and trigger the birth of a new one. The aliens who built it probably intended for some random species to pick it up and bring it back to their solar system, destroying it and wiping out any competition. Danica overhears Evers telling Benjamin about it and rushes over to check on Yerzy, finding him knocked out against the object. She gently moves him away, and when Evers checks his health, she finds out the objects made Yerzy a little younger and a whole lot stronger. Meanwhile, Nick is down in the mines, horrified to see the workers' bodies and no sign of fuel. He also finds some dead guys in spacesuits, which probably means they're Troy's friends. Nick radios the Nightingale, but Troy picks up and admits he offed everyone to keep the treasure for himself, and now he wants Nick dead too. Troy uses the Nightingale system to hack into the mine's machinery, setting the machines to start tearing everything apart. Nick dodges the machines and busts a glass to escape the mines, sprinting like crazy with a vehicle hot on his heels. He barely makes it to the elevator in time, but Troy can still track him on the cameras and starts taunting him even confessing that he used to be an addict too. Pissed off, Nick smashes the camera before darting out of the elevator, only to watch his shuttle take off without him. Just then, Danica walks in and sees Troy controlling the shuttle. He tries to claim he's helping Nick, but she's not buying it, so he rips out the control stick and throws it at her. Then he grabs Danica and kisses her against her will, but she whacks him with the stick and spits in his face. In response, Troy punches her and shoves her into the airlock, which he opens to send her flying into space. As Danica floats off to her death, Troy's wound heals instantly. Back in the ship, Yerzy is trying to get to the object again, but someone changed the lock code. Out of nowhere, Troy shows up and smashes the keypad with some kind of superhuman strength. Then he shows off his hands, glowing purple, confirming he touched the object too. Yerzy tries to run, but Troy grabs him and throws him across the room, screaming at him about Danica. Yerzy, scared out of his mind, grabs a tank and starts swinging at Troy who's just standing there not even flinching. Yerzy finally manages to hit him hard enough to make him bleed, but Troy still shakes it off like it's nothing and quickly knocks Yerzy out. Then, Troy tosses Yerzy into space just like that. Over in the control room, Benjamin spots the busted panel and tells Sweetie to reach out to Yerzy or Danica, but Sweetie can't get a hold of either. He takes off running and finds Troy trying to cozy up to Evers again. Without missing a beat, Benjamin shoots a hook at Troy, sending him flying before grabbing Evers and running to another room to grab some guns. Armed up, Benjamin goes hunting for Troy and hears a noise turns out, it's just the robot. But when he turns around, there's Troy, and Benjamin immediately shoots him in the head. Problem is, Troy's mutated now, and he just tosses Benjamin into the quarantine room and snatches his gun. Panicking, Benjamin begs Sweetie to open the hatch and eject Troy, but Sweetie refuses because she can't harm humans. Troy, now pissed off, 
shoots at the door a few times, then starts punching it until he finally busts it open. He throws Benjamin again, killing him instantly. Sweetie breaks the news to Evers, who tries to get in touch with Nick, but no luck. Right then, Troy finds her and finally spills the truth. He's actually her ex-boyfriend, Carl. The object just made him way younger, which is why Evers didn't recognize him. Carl admits he called the Nightingale to track her down, hoping to show off his new powers and win her back. When Evers tries to leave, Carl grabs her, ready to force her to stay. But just as he's about to make his move, Nick's voice comes through the comms. That rescue return unit Nick set up earlier? It worked. And now he's on his way back. While Carl's busy arguing with Nick, Evers grabs a laser and shoots him in the eye. As Carl's power kicks in to heal his wound, Evers bolts to the docking area. Just as she's about to greet Nick, Carl shoves her aside and fires a hook at the opening door, yanking someone in. But it turns out to be nothing but an empty suit set up as bait. Nick suddenly shows up, armed with two mechanical tools, ready to take on Carl. They get into it, but Carl's strength gives him the upper hand quick, disarming Nick and tossing him around like a rag doll. Evers grabs an axe and swings it at Carl's back, giving Nick a chance to grab his tool and chop off Carl's arm. Nick then grabs Carl by the neck and locks him inside a cage. While they rush to check on the object, Carl pulls the axe out of his back, busts the cage open, and escapes. Sweetie senses the object's getting unstable, and the drive is finally charged, meaning they've got 10 minutes to jump. Meanwhile, Carl finds his severed arm and reattaches it like it's nothing. He heads to the chamber room and starts wrecking the pods with the axe. He also tries to grab the object, but realizes Nick is moving it away. A furious Carl chases after him, only to discover that it's the robot dressed up in Nick's clothes, setting up a trap. Carl grabs the object and notices an explosive inside. Right then, the robot flips him off before detonating the bomb. Carl blows up in a massive explosion, wrecking half of the Nightingale. Sweetie quickly calculates that the object is reacting to the gravity of the Blue Giant, creating a supernova that'll hit Earth in 51 years. It either wipe out life on Earth or push humanity to a whole new level of existence. There's only one pod left, and the duo agrees to share it, even though it's risky with two people in one chamber. As the supernova finishes and explodes, the Nightingale makes the jump bringing them back to Earth. When they finally look at each other, they realize they've swapped an eye with one another. Sweetie scans them and confirms they're okay, but drops another bombshell Evers is pregnant. But Sweetie can't tell if it's from their earlier fun or a side effect of sharing the jump. 